Hey, welcome back. So we're getting ready to start here. So first thing we're going to do is draw three, build two. So where do we draw from? We draw from this deck here. So one, two, three, flippity flippity. And I drew three of the exact same cards. I just want to make sure. Okay, they do. <laughs> they are shuffled. I'm going to shuffle them again, but uh, uh, this is not always a bad thing. Okay, so when you get these cards, you can use them as a grain field or as a town. Now, um, as you can see, you need four grain fields or three towns, right? And um, the fields are very nice because getting these supplies is very handy. Um, but with our goal in mind, to get resources to level two and township to level one, I need three towns Bro. to get township Bro. to level one. Bro. So this is actually a little bit of a blessing. So I'm going to flip these around and see this little number here? That three means the town's going to take three turns to build. So I draw three, I get to build two. Now this third card goes into your hinterlands. However, um, we can buy a wild card, which is one of these, but we need a gem. We don't have one. The wild cards are really nice to get, by the way. We get to do an extra build. So if I'm willing to spend a citizen and two of my bricks, I get to build another one. So I'm going to pump this out here. I'm basically uh, overworking my people. All right. So um, before we get too deep, for the solo rules, there's this Warfront card gets drawn the same time we resolve the events. And then, like I said, this is going to go up and down based on what we do. And we can do an attack here, no. or we can spend resources during our action phase. And these little arrows that are pointing to the left means you can push this left. So if I spend two supplies or three gold, I can push this left by one blip. If I spend six gold, I can push it left three times. So that's what this is getting at. And then um, <clears throat> uh, this is a symbol for drawing a card. Um, specifically from the hinterlands in this case and then it's this little uh, symbol here means see that symbol there that's his hinterland so um, that's a great question actually I think for the setup I was supposed to put some cards there so no Connor for you? so we position the war front panel And you can see the Warfront in step six of the event phase. After resolving the year event, the player draws a Warfront. So we're going to do that. And this last stand is just this thing here. This is bad things happen. And then um, this is, we can attack the front line. We can use our economy. So there's two ways to make it go back. We can use our armies or we can use our money. And then this hinterlands here, this is the part I was getting at. Anytime a Warfront Hinterland slot becomes empty, a card is drawn from the Endeavor deck and replaces it. There should never be any empty slots. That should have been in the setup, so my apologies. So what that's saying is, is we're going to draw three more. And, and it doesn't matter the orientation of the card yet. The orientation only matters when you actually build the card. So these are all available, and so for one gold, I can take any of these cards. And that's during the action phase. We are not in the action phase yet. That's down here. So, um, but I can, during the action phase, take one of these cards. And by taking them, I'm just taking them from this hinterlands and moving them to my hinterlands. Because remember, this is my hand. All right, there's no such thing as holding a card outside of this three spots. All right, and uh, you can see that this is an identical copy of what we have. And then now we finally have some variation here. Um, these are swordsmen. They roll blue dice. Oh, no. And then you got the pikemen. <laughs> and uh, the pikemen are better at defending. The swordsmen are better at attacking. They got better dice, but the red number is better for the pikemen. Okay, so that's how you can build your army. All right, so after we do that, we do our extra build, which I did. And then we do progress. So progress is very simple. You just grab all your stuff 
and that moves down one level. So then we move to the action phase. This is where I can spend a gold to take one of these. All right, I can expedite, which means there's two types of expedite. I can spend a brick expedite to take any of these buildings and I get to advance it twice. Or I can advance two buildings once each. You just get two advances of a building. Now you might be saying, well, where does it say that? Well, that's what this helps you with. So um, right here, the brick advances buildings. You get two advancements. A supply advances soldiers. You can buy knowledge, uh, which is the technology tiles. Um, you're limited to 10 technology tiles, by the way. Um, that costs just straight up gold. And at any point in the action phase, you can spend two supplies to add a population. These are called hardship slots um, when there's a missing one. And you can also at this stage fortify, which is putting one of these bricks into your fortification. That helps you for defending your, your people. And then of course, we can send off a caravan. We have to send any four sources to do the caravan. Now my one drawback of rushing this is I spent two of my available resources. I had three. I could have sent a caravan this round. Or I could just keep this here and then this would be at three. That citizen would still be there. And then I can spend two gold to get a fourth resource, right? And then send that into the caravan. That's my tough choice right now. Now, why why was I so eager to get this third one here? Uh, largely because having three towns all finish at the same time means I get to upgrade this immediately. And then I gain one gold every turn after that, every year after. So this is, you know, with any engine building, the earlier you get your income going in the game, the longer you get the benefit from it. By I can always build this town next turn, but then it's going to finish one year later, or I'm spending these to rush this. Now do you understand why this one little brick means so much now? <laughs> it does. It means a lot. <laughs> so one of the things I can do, I mean, our our uh, goal is we got to get two trade routes going. And when does it need to be done by? It needs to be done by year six. So I send a trade out here. I don't get it back until here. I can send a trade out here. I get it back here. I have two years where I can not send a trade out, out and I'll be okay. So that's why I'm choosing on this round I'm not going to send the trade route out, and I'm instead going to just rush this. And I'm going to shoot to do the trade route next time. So um, not quite as juicy, but it is what it is. And I'm not going to expedite anything, because I need all three of these to finish. Expediting just one of them doesn't help me. And like I said, this is a it's a nice little wild card, so it counts as any of these symbols. Um, these are just nice to have, and you can just keep it in your territory and use it later. All right, so enough of that. Um, there's really no other actions I want to do. I could, like I said, spend a gold to get more of these. Um, you just got to understand, you can only build two every round. And it costs you a citizen and two of these to build more than two. So having extra cards in your hand is not always a, <laughs> a nice thing to have. Um, it gives you more choices, yes. but I, you know, even if I wanted to build all three of these cards, which I sort of do, I would like to have two armies as well. Um, I would have to spend a citizen and two of these with each time I want to uh, do that. It just, it's not, it's not going to be super uh, cohesive there. So then I have to choose a stance. So uh, in a multiplayer game, these are secret, right? And you got to put these out on here. Um, I am going to put out the worker stance, right? So the way it would work in a multiplayer game is this is me letting the other players know that I finished this and this, because remember, we're doing this simultaneously. And I chose my stance, and now this is where we get into the turn order phase of the game. So but when everybody puts their marker out here, that's how we know everybody's caught up and we're ready to advance to the next level of the game. Okay? So it's just me, so nothing to worry about there. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reveal, hey, I'm a worker. And then the next guy would say, hey, I'm a worker too. You know, <laughs> you know I'm a pepper too. And so um, uh, the type of token you chose dictates what happens next. So we reveal. And if you're doing a campaign, which is, I, I call it attacking, but the game term is campaign, um, you resolve that first in player order. And player order is determined by whoever is the highest level here. And if that's a tie, it's the number on the back of your leader card. Okay, so um, uh, they go out, they get to attack things. So in a solo game, like I said, we get to attack here. In a, um, in a multiplayer game, they could attack cards out here, but none are available. And they can attack <laughs> other players to steal their hinterlands. So had I not built this, this would have been here, and somebody could have attacked me to steal that card. Um, attacking hinterland cards this early in the game is not a wise strategy. And these are all towns. Okay. So the attacking is not that viable at this point. So uh, I am going to use this for... Um, and then the other thing is, is you return the caravan. That would be resolved at this point. So none of these happen for us. Next thing we do is we're going to reveal the year event. Then for solo mode, it says to do the warfront. So really nice that they added that. So, um, so we're going to flip this over. And this is a looming threat. So this is something for us to attack. If we don't attack it, it's going to add five threat to the invasion. So let's say they invaded us here. They would have a threat of two, and this would add five more to it. So we got to attack them. We need to have siege weapon technology to even be able to attack them. So this is going to stay on the board for a while for us. And so uh, that blows. That's not a good one to get the first round of the game. But it means I made the right call, though, because we're not being attacked. And I'm going to put this, I could either go here to get an extra supply, I'm going to go here and now I'm going to get two bricks and a silver. So I'm trying to get as much as I can for my guy. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> we do that year end event. Um, me putting the guy here, this will be resolved at the harvest. We're not quite at the harvest yet, we got to do the war front. Now this is new for me, so I'm learning this game as we go. So bear with me. I'm reading this card for the first time. So what do we got here? Serpent's Aid. Place this card in Bill Q3 oh, and then when in territory, <laughs> discard. Oh my gosh, this is a wonderful card. So it goes in Bill Q3 and what it's saying is, is that when we go uh, one, two, three and it gets to here, I get two left arrows and then that's a prosperity point. So prosperity points are how I pay for these cards to get these bonuses for the rest of the saga. That is fantastic. I like that card. All right. I didn't know they were all, I thought they were all bad, but that's a good one. That means the bad ones are coming. <laughs> okay. Um, we are done with the first year, so we got to do end harvest. So we just go along. I get nothing from this, nothing from this. And then here I get a brick. And because my worker's there, I get a silver and a brick. So I'm going to add one more silver and one more brick. So I replenish the bricks that I spent to rush that last order. And then this goes back here, and we're ready for year two. It's that simple. One year is done. No, Richard, please. <laughs> okay, so now we move to year two. Um, we're going to grab three more. One, two, three. And unfortunately for this, uh, if, if the designers are ever watching this game, I highly recommend that, that one of these flushes off and then these shift down and then we replenish it with a new one every year. I, I highly recommend that you add that mechanic. I know I haven't, I just admitted I never played solo, but this feels very stagnant. And if I'm looking for a certain type of card, these aren't it. So, you know, I want this to flush. So maybe a card I am looking for does appear in there, and then I would use this action a little bit more. Alright, so what do we got? Okay, so we got our first soldier. Um, we have our first manor. 
we have two more towns, another manor, and then this is what's called a, uh, a Prosper card. So what this is is that you place it here in the 4 queue. Once it enters the territory, we would gain those two resources. So, um, and it also counts as a gem for victory points at the end of the game. So this is a card that stays with you forever, and then you get a one-time bonus of this and this whenever you finish, you know, producing it. So, um, these are nice. I'm not going to lie. And getting that citizen back is also nice. Uh, but getting two manners is nicer. So this is manner one. And I just realized I forgot something last round. And this is something I should not have forgotten. And you know why? It's because I put it over here. We're supposed to draw one of these cards every year of the game. And it's done during the action or the build phase. And you have the build phase and the action phase to use this card. So this is retconning. My apologies. So we're at the S level. And I can discard a gold and a silver to get two of these attack tokens. And what those are is they give me plus one pips for purposes of resolving a battle. So if I want to attack this looming threat, I need five or better in my dice rolls. I can spend uh, those tokens to give me a plus one to my dice rolls. So I would have to spend a gold and a silver to be able to do this. Now, um, I gained a silver here, but I had the money. I could have afforded it. The other thing you can do is you, you, you can ignore the card and just take the silver. Just one silver for the card. And because I'm retconning, I'm just going to do exactly that. I'll just take the silver because I never actually exercised the card. So my apologies there. That is supposed to happen as part of playing. And uh, okay, so I chose to build two banners. Why? Oh, look at that, two banners. Did I need to improve this? No, I actually need this one right? In order to uh, complete my quest, I need a resources two. So I need two of these. However, we haven't drawn any. There's none available anywhere. And then this one, I'm just going to put in my hinterlands. I'm not going to do the rush. We want to get our caravan out. Okay, so I do that and I select all my cards and they progress one space like so. I didn't finish anything. So um, I could spend resources to rush these. I don't have enough, so I'm not going to do that. So uh, I'm done with the progress. Now I go down here. I'm not expediting. I can only buy resource technology. So resource technology, this costs three gold. That increases my uh, fort capacity. And then this one. I gain one extra brick if I put my worker on that space, but it cost me five gold. I did do that last time, right? So what it's saying is I would get two bricks here instead of just one. So then I would get three bricks total if I put a worker here. It's nice. I It's just that it costs five gold. I only have four gold right now. So I couldn't afford that even if I wanted to. It's very expensive. So I'm not buying any knowledge. I don't want to feed population. I don't have the ability to. I could fortify, which uh, I do want to do. This is the problem with caravans. Uh, if you're a person who plays the game without using caravans, you can use these to fortify and to rush your production. It's a trade-off. I want to get this caravan going, so I'm actually going to spend two gold to make one supply. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put three of those and one of those in my caravan and then put this on year three because we're currently resolving year two all right and so I'm actually done with my action phase I got to choose my stance and I'm gonna gamble I don't know what this is but I'm gonna gamble that we're not gonna get attacked I have to. Otherwise, we're in big, big trouble. <laughs> um, okay, so let's uh, let's proceed. 
So we we know I'm not attacking anything. Oh, there we go. So I'm not being attacked. What this one is, I'm sorry I rotated it the wrong way. Each player decides, and we debated this, but the rule book says must. So you can't say I don't want to do either. You have to do these unless you have no citizen. So I can spend one citizen to get three brick or spend another one to get three gold. And this is a tough choice because if I want to get that um, that technology which costs five gold, this one might be the nice way to go. But I'm going to choose the citizen to get three brick because at this point in the game, I think you've noticed that the bricks are pretty valuable. Mm. Alright, so that's the the event. This I'm going to put back I'm going to put that there again to get more bricks and we got to draw a Warfront card. Unyielding Menace. So here you go. It's got two so he's moving two over. So now he's up to three. Plus he's doing a direct assault. So the way I understood this is uh, he's rolling his dice against my dice for defense purposes. And then I have to defend against this. And uh, if he beats me, he gets another blip. He's going to beat me. Uh, so he gets two red dice. And I have no army at all. And so that means I'm going to get two green gray dice. So I'm going to grab all the dice and roll. Oh, this almost was a three. Did you see that? Um, so he rolled a three. I rolled a one. He won. And let's get this out of the way so we have more space to do our rolling. If this would have been the three, I actually would have pulled it off. Okay, so he won, so that means he gets another bip. So just like that, he went right down the track. So now I can use my economics or whatever to push it back. And then this thing is nice because I'm going to push him back too. There. Okay, um, so far this has been real easy. I like it. Um, we do our year-end harvest. So again, it's nothing, nothing, nothing. And then I'm going to get two brick and a silver. That's it. That's two years. So this video is 22 minutes. So I've been doing uh, one, 10 minutes a year. Ah, I forgot again. I need to do something. I'm putting this here. <laughs> All right, we forgot this again. So this one, you may discard the coin below and gain a free extra build. So I could have spent three gold to get an extra build, which means I could have built another one of these without having to sacrifice a peasant. I would have liked to build that, but I didn't have, well, I had the three gold, but I needed it to send out the caravan. So the answer is no, I wouldn't have done it. So instead I would have taken the silver. That's oh, this moves around. I didn't even realize that. Okay. So I would have taken the silver. So this is two gold plus one. So I technically have three gold right now. Okay, we're going to start year three. And just like always, we're going to get one, two, three. Uh, we got our first query, which we need. This is needed to get to resources level two. So that's for sure. We're going to build one of those. And then we got um, either a barracks or this one. After completing a caravan, gain one fortification and one determination. Hmm. That's not awful. The grain fields are nice because supplies are valuable, but you need so many of them. Uh, so I think the second one I'm going to build is actually, let's get our first soldier going. And that means now we have two here, unless I want to do a rush build again, right? I have five of these. I could do it. But what do I want to rush build is the question. Um, a town and a field are both nice, but you can see I need many and many. 
Um, the township only needs to be level one to complete the quest. Uh, if there's anything, this barracks would be nice. Because getting the barracks up to level two, um, see that little three right there? Just to the left of my mouse? That three is an automatic three defense no matter what mode I'm in. See, then it goes to five. Like, that's really valuable to at least get this to level one. And also, military level one is needed. I keep going the wrong way. To get the siege weapons. And I need siege weapons to take out this looming threat. Um, so if they're going to do anything with my military, there's that. I mean, I could attack this with the military, too. It's it, you, There's not enough time to do everything you want to do in this game. <laughs> um, you have to focus. Like, I'm going to be, you know, a military-centric faction, or I'm going to be an economic faction. I'm trying to do the economic faction with this one, and I'm realizing that I'm suffering in the military department here. So, where I'm going with this is to build this barracks would be nice, because you need two armies and one barracks to go to level two. I'll do it. One, one, two, and then we're gonna flip this around, put the barracks there, and then before we forget, see, because this is here, it just reminds me now, I get to do this. So this is, I get to draw extra Endeavor cards. I'm already swimming in Endeavor cards. Um, I can draw this card before deciding to do this, because maybe the other card I'm gonna draw is another quarry which is what I want to do this. Um, so I could do that, and instead of building this one, I would build the other quarry, and then this would just go sit over here again. Um, it's not a bad idea. It really isn't. Except, what's the chances that the next card's a quarry? So I'm going to instead take the silver, because I don't know if you noticed, but resources are tight in this game, so having the extra money isn't bad. <clears throat> so now we take everything here, and we progress. Oh, I didn't select it all. Let's get you out of the way. There, like that. Then we move it all down one, and there we go. Bing, bing, bing. These move to here. And they can stay here forever. There's nothing, you know, there's no limit or anything. But I'm going to exchange them right away. So I have one, two, three, and I need one, two, three. So this is going to go to level one. And then this is going to go into the discard pile. Like so. Now, having this at level one, I'm finally making some gold income. So this won't be so tight anymore. And then I can start, you know, using these market cards for what they're really worth. Um, also, once these get to level two, once these get built and this goes to level two, I'm going to have the level one uh, version. And once I have the level one version, I can then take the level, see, the S or the one version of the market card. So upgrading your leader in this faction is powerful if you want to use these cards effectively. Okay, so we did that. We did uh, actually used an extra build. We progressed. Now we can expedite. So we can start spending these to do a rush. So for example, if I did want to upgrade my leader, I can rush the two of these. That would cost me two. Each one of these gives me two bumps. So this would be one bump and this would be another two bumps. Um, it's not a bad idea. I'm actually going to go ahead and do it. One, two, and we're going to go one, two, and see, I satisfied this, so this now goes to level one, and both of these now get discarded. Now, what do I get for this going to level one? I get the level one advisor, but not until the income phase, but there's no harm in grabbing it now. I, um, I, it's, the, the only thing pitfall you can get yourself into is this market card. You can't draw two cards this round because you definitely don't get that until later. But 
I'm just going to grab it now, and I think it's all the way up here still. So here's the level 1 leader. Replaces my current one. And his bonus is exactly the same. I can do it in the builder action phase. See? It's worded identically. It's just that he lets me use the level 1 market. And she only let me use the starter market. Okay. All right, so we are done with all this, and we got to choose our stance. I'm telling you, we're going to get attacked eventually. <laughs> there's no way there's none here. Uh, but for now, I'm going to stick to my guns, and let's stay economical, and we'll do this. All right, so this reveals we're economic. Um, per the order, we resolve the caravan before we reveal the event. So in the caravan, I had three stone and one supply. Now you got to come over to this card here for the caravan. Each material rolls a green die. Each supply rolls a blue. And if somebody attacked your caravan, they would roll two gray dice. So green and blue. So I'm going to roll three green and one blue. One, two three, and a blue. All right, this symbol here means I get to re-roll just this one, not any other one. And so of course I'm going to re-roll it. All right, so I got three, four, five, six, seven. So I rolled seven pips. Now the way the caravans work is each true mark, which is a pip, gains a silver. So I just gain seven silver. And then I get to gain a trade route, which I'm going to do. That's the whole reason why I did this. So seven silver, this is two, four, six, seven. All right. So I got myself some nice money from that trade route. And our caravan, I should be a little more specific. And I'm going to take this little eyeball for my trade route. So what this is, is this lets me peek three, seas three years into the future. And here we can verify it here. I just got to find the section. Bear with me. So, oh, wrong one. Here we go. So 12, oh, foresee, oh, foresee one year event, not three. So I get to see one year event. Actually, I get to pick which one I want to see. That's interesting. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to foresee this one. So I'm going to flip that over. Oh, look at that. That's an invasion. That is a really nice one to know about. Okay, so I'm just going to rotate it to show that that's the one I know. And obviously the other players don't get to know what that is. So... I did my caravan. It comes back. Let's reduce our supplies here. We just sold them for all the cash and prizes. And now we get to reveal the year event. Bam. Oh, two things happen here. This is the kingdom advance, but this always happens. This is the year event. This one here. Sorry, I rotated it the wrong way again. Productive year. If we chose to defend, we would get the C next year. We chose the worker, so we're going to gain two gold and a gem. That's fantastic. And yes, that was pure luck. I had no idea that event was coming. I mean, I know that nice ones like that are in the, the deck, but still. All right, and I'm going to, again, you can see I'm spending through my bricks as quickly as I'm getting them. So I'm going to once again keep doing that. And um, I got that gold from the caravan, right? Not until here. Okay. Yeah, I didn't have... I may have had five gold. Here, here's where my mind is wondering. See this crane? I gained the extra... Like, I keep using that action over and over again. This would be very effective. And I just don't think I could have afforded it. 
So I probably could have, but I'm not going to retcon that. I uh, did not remember. Okay, so the year event is over. So now we're going to go do the war front, which is this one. Nothing happens. I will take it. And then, uh, then we resolve this. This happens every game on year three. This is a fixed event. So what this says is we're going to gain an advisor or commander. And then in the solo mode, Saga, which is what we're playing, on the second and third game, we're on our first game, we're going to gain an advisor or commander from our allies. So that's this spot here. And what that's saying is I can pick any other faction. And actually, the, the rulebook limits it to two. I don't know why they limit it to two, but they did. So you can see, like, uh, for example, the Norvik clan, I can only take Didos or Scarbrick. And uh, which one's Didos? Here's Scarbrick. So I can only take these two. So this is a once per game. You may discard two supply to gain two board cards into your army. Or I can boost agriculture. So if I put my worker on the agriculture space, I gain an extra supply or two extra cards and two more bonus hinterland slots. So this would be, like I can pick one of them and then they would go here and I get to treat them as if they're my ally. I get their bonus. But that's not the case here. What I'm getting is I'm getting an advisor. So I'm coming up here <clears throat> and I can take all these things but I get minus one victory point. I can gain three hinterland spots and then once per game I gain a free extra build and draw three extra cards. This is helpful in the epic game. when Because those capstones are something you really need. And you got to draw a lot of cards to get to them. This could be helpful there. When drawing market cards, draw two and choose one. Return the other to the discard pile. Um, which reminds me, I didn't draw my market card, did I? <laughs> and uh, here, when rolling for caravan, I gain plus one pip for every gem I have. And if I have six or more pips when I roll my dice, I get a gem. Uh, that's a nice way to get some victory points. But I'm going to take the trade guard. I want the soldier, because having soldiers in my army is really hard. And I only have one in my queue. So here's one quick thing we can do. See, there's three cards here. We're on year three, so that means I, I did draw and play my market cards like I was supposed to. So I, I'm okay there. And in fact, I remember, this guy's not supposed to come out until right now, which is the end harvest. So let's do that. We get a gold from here. And I get two brick and a silver. And at this point, I can go one, two for one, one, two for two, one, two for three, and then just do this. That's all six and one half dozen. All right, we're at the end of year three little more stuff happening and uh, but as you can see the game is flowing fairly quickly especially when you're solo um, okay so start of year four we have our gem these are just our spent people this comes back up and once again we're gonna draw three cards let's see if that was oh look that was the quarry remember we said we needed that and there's another one and then we got Upon entering the territory, I gain two gold and a gem. Well, I think for sure I'm going to build my two quarries here. I only need one of them, actually. Let me think about this. Two would get me to my level two. So what do I need more? Um, I could... This is pretty easy to do. I have a gem. This lock symbol. It means that everything to the left of it, you don't actually spend. You just have to have it. And then this, these ones you spend. Over here, I don't spend my two troops. I just spend this. So that's what the lock means. Um, okay. Uh, I could send a manor down. If I send a manor down, I only need two of them. I can get to my level two advisor. And, and just so you know, look, I'm scoring victory points by upgrading these. I get to build two cards. I also have these cards over here to build. See, these are nice. And this is actually worth two gems. I get this gem plus that's a gem at the end of the game. Th they don't suck. I just, the thing I struggle with the most 
is I want I want the icons. I want to build here. This is just giving me fluff. I do need grain, but as you can see, I need I need four grain, and it's just so hard to commit four cards. So I can build this one for a grain, or this one over here. I could also get the three towns and get this keep this going. There's no harm in continuing that. Um, but I actually think I'm going to go with the manor. I need two of them though. See now I got another card over here. And if I want to keep spending peasants and two of these, I can do it. But I don't want to. I know this is going to be an invasion. So, I also know I need to get out another caravan if I want to do more stuff. But let's grab one of these. Discard a gold to roll the dice below. If I roll four or more, I gain five gold. The green dice are really tough. The, the three pips is only on one side. The blue dice are a little bit better because they go up to four. I gotta get to five total. Obviously the red dice is your best shot and it's gambling. I would lose a gold if I do this. Um, or I just kick a silver, but I'm gonna do this. And see, this is where upgrading this guy to the one matters. Because I'm gonna spend one gold and roll two blue dice instead of two green dice. So let's see if that pays off for us. Getting five gold right now would be fantastic. Oh my gosh, I rolled a three. That was not fantastic. I needed a five. Yep, that's why they call it betting. So, no good for me. No bueno. Okay, I want to spend this gem. And let's grab a wild card. And I'm going to put it right here at the top. Like so. And I'm just thinking, is there anything else? Do I want to do any extra builds? I would spend two of these. I bought the wild card, which is an action you haven't seen before. No, I don't. So let's do progress. All right, so we built this, and this happens. So I gain a prosperity. I don't know how to like track prosperity, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the little sword symbol and just stick it next to him. So that shows I have one prosperity. Um, or I can maybe put it like here or something to show I gain some prosperity. Um, these are my three choices. I can take a peasant, uh, a gem. I didn't want to confuse things. So, um, I'm just thinking. Do I want to spend these to rush something? So like this one, I may want to rush so I get this upgraded resources because then I'm getting two every round. I know I'm being invaded this round. So I'm going to spend two of my bricks to put two bricks here. I have a max of two. And what this is, is I can spend a brick and it's going to absorb two damage. It's like, you know, reinforcing your walls. And it's going to be bad, because whatever this is, it's going to be four threat plus five. I'm going to have nine threat, ten, eleven, twelve. So they're going to try to do twelve damage against me. I can block for five. I can do this one for two, for seven. I still got to absorb five damage. So this is going to be four more damage, two damage each, and then I got to absorb one more damage, and I'm going to have to either spend a gold or a brick to absorb that damage. It's not good. So I keep going to the right. I apologize. To the left here, I have 
Level 1 Influence, Township, and Resources. So I can get one of these. So this one let me foresee three years in the future. Always nice, but it costs four gold. <coughs> and I've been eyeing this one up. I can afford it now. I can do this one. I gain two materials to my fortifications. Also, it increases my maximum capacity by two. So now I can have four here, and I immediately gain two when I build it, or get that technology. So that would let me completely defend myself in this war. And so then uh, what you want to get is you want to get this victory parade, which we can get because we're level one township. <coughs> victory parade. If you had no damage reparations during invasion, fortifications are the exceptions. Gain a population. So this plus this is six gold. I'm going to buy both of these. So this one is a gray research. I'm going to put it above the gray, blue above the blue. And that's going to cost me six gold. It's expensive, I know. But there's a plan here. And then what that did was that let me go one, two, because now I have these two plus two more for fortifications. So what is it that I'm trying to avoid? Let me show you. When they do the invasion, we're going to add up all their threat. We're going to add up all of our defenses. And then if there's anything left over in their favor, so they're going to attack me for 12, and I'm able to defend 7. <clears throat> so that means there's a 5 difference. So they're going to do 5 damage to me. So I have to pay these resources to absorb their damage. i got to kill a peasant for 3. I can destroy one of my cards that are in my queue for 5. I can destroy a gem for 4. Gold, supply, and stone mitigate 1. But if it's in my fortifications then I get to block it for two. So this technology <coughs> is saying if I had no damage reparations, meaning I was able to completely block the attack, the fortifications is the exception, meaning that I'm allowed to use my fortifications to do the blocking. I gain a population. So that's what I'm doing. And it's going to be worth it because I spent three gold on this. Um, to get back a population, I need two supplies. Two supplies at the current exchange rate is four gold to get back one population. I'm going to spend three gold to get back one population. I know I spent three more, but this is going to help me through all the other battles too. Alright, so a little confusing, but hopefully that matters or it makes sense. And then yeah, I have this wild card and I'm just going to hold on to it. I don't need it at the moment. And so um, we're going to pick our guy, and we're going to pick Defender. So you're going to see me do the Defense Stance for the first time. And again, uh, once we reveal, nothing happens. Um, I did want to send out another Caravan, but you can see I'm a little light on the resources. So for this round, I'm not going to be doing that. And so again, we're going to Defend. So what there's the Defender goes here. And you can see the little symbol here that when you defend, um, when you defend, you get five defense automatically. You also get a plus one if you're rolling your dice. Um, we're not rolling dice in this situation, but we might when we do this card. You never know. But right now we're we're defending. We're gonna get five points of defense because of this guy being here. If I would have attacked went on a conquest, I would have gotten two points of defense. So you still get some points for those two symbols. You get nothing if you choose your worker. It's a little bit of a gamble. It's one of the things my younger son did not like about this game, is he felt like it was like you you were doing rock, paper, scissors. And it's not true, because you can peek. There's things you can do to peek. You just got to be willing to pay for it or plan for it. Okay, we know this is an invasion because we got to peek. And that was a huge thing for us. So it's given us a reminder that Victory Parade works. So how does Invasion work? Remember I said the first thing you do is you add up his strength. This appeared in year four, so the threat is four. This is not defeated yet, so this gets added to the threat. If this was not here, the threat would only be four. 
But because this is here, it's 4 plus 5, which is 9. Then you come to your player board, and I have three more pips here, so 10, 11, 12. They're going to attack me with strength 12. I defend for 5. My fort doesn't have any natural defense, so 12 minus 5, I have 7 more to mitigate. So 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. I had to spend all four of these at two each, but I was able to do it. And the leftovers doesn't mean anything. And so I was able to completely defend them, even though it took all my, my bricks. And in doing so, my victory parade happens. Yay! So I get one of these back. And I win the battle. And you might be thinking, well, what do you get for the battle? You don't get anything. You just... <laughs> That's the thing. These guys are jerks. They attack you. And you got to be able to defend them. And uh, I could have, actually, let me put this one back, right? Um, there's only one point left, right, that we needed to mitigate. I have this guy. So what I could do is I'm going to have him defend my empire for two. See that two there? In order to do that, I have to put him here, like so. You see that little shield? He goes back into the work queue, so it's going to take two turns before I get him back again. And if I go off on an offensive, they come here in the three. It takes three turns to get him back if you go on an offensive. So just because you have an army doesn't mean you get to use them every turn. Alright, so we resolved the year event. Now we got to do the war front. And there it is. They are assaulting. I really should have left the guy here. If I would have left him here, I would have gotten to roll that green die. So it would have looked like this. I get to roll a gray and a green together. I should have done that, but that, I changed my mind, so I got to stick with it now. So he's moving two to the right. So he's up to six now. And he's going to roll two red dice. If this card triggers last stand, I get two to my defense roll. Well, last stand is way down here. We don't want that, but it did not. So I'm doing this roll again. He rolled a four, I rolled a two. So he uh, gets two more bumps. He's up to eight now. Holy cow, I actually moved him to the left. Man, he would have been at ten by now. I mean, look at this. So he started on one, and he went two, three, and then four because of this. Then 5, 6, 7, 8, because of this. Oh my gosh. When I put this up here, I never moved them to the left. <laughs> my apologies. If you guys were screaming into the screen, I, I caught it. I just, it took me a very long time. And remember, I can always do this. I just haven't yet. Okay. So that's done. Now we're going to do our year-end harvest. We get a gold. I get two resources and a silver for this. Then this goes back. And now we just ended four years. First phase is almost over. Game's almost over. How many points do I need to get? I know we looked this up before. I need to get to 26 points. Ooh. I'm at two, five, seven points <laughs> plus maybe a little bit of change um, I got a long way to go folks alright we're gonna start year five and as always we get our three cards alright gain one hinterland slot gain three cards not a big fan these pikemen would be nice they're really good defenders to help us with this whole war thing. He's got pikemen here. We could have grabbed two. Um, I'm seeing a lot of grain fields now. I'm going to make sure we grab our card. So this says, gain any one knowledge below that your provinces allow. So I can get a level two knowledge. This is fantastic. None of these are level two, but I could grab 
this guy it gives me the plus resource that we keep talking about or see this one's nice but it's discard a puppet to double the icon on a grain field it can get brutal I'm not level one though I can't even do that yet but uh, this makes the exchange rate better it's just one gold and one silver um, this is a nice one uh, because it counts as a knowledge for all the other ones or I could just for C3 in the future because we keep remember we keep blind guessing um, I'm gonna do this one because it's free that's four gold I would never spend I know I keep talking about this one but I eh, I'm being a stubborn mule I I think seeing three years in the future is better than getting that extra resource right now because we're currently in year five. I can't see that one. I guess I can, because I haven't seen it yet. But I'm going to see three years in the future for real. So this one, as you can see, is a, um, a productive one. I'm going to look at this one, productive. And this one is an invasion. So we know that another invasion is coming in, in the, the second phase. So I'm just going to... Move them like so, and then we'll we'll take the cards off whenever it's actually resolved. This one I don't know. It could be another invasion because remember there's three of them in this deck, but we know this one's not. So I'm gambling on this one. And if I can send another caravan, um, when that caravan comes back, I get to actually peek again. That's the whole reason for taking this. The, every time you send a caravan and it comes back, I get to peek a second time. So in order to satisfy our objective, I got to send a caravan this round. But we're, right now we're dealing with this. I resolved this card. I took the bonus that this card gave me and that let me peek. And then uh, we built our stuff or no, I still have to build things and I'm choosing to do the grain field. So one and two is our free build. Then I can rush build something, but I don't really have the resources to pull that off. So I'm going to put both of these in the hinterlands, like so, and then everything moves down. My swordsman is now finished. He rolls a blue die, which will help against this nonsense. And I could rush these. It's going to cost me a lot of materials, though. And I don't need to finish it until the next age or next year. So I'm not going to rush it. What I am going to do is I'm going to spend the two gold to get one supply. And I'm going to send out a caravan because we got to do that. So we're going to do the same thing. One, two, three, and one. And that just depleted all my resources again. Just when I'm starting to get them up. I decided not to expedite. We actually got knowledge for free. Um, I did not build the extra. We sent out the caravan. Can't feed any population. I can't fortify either. I have nothing left. I'm going to choose my stance. So this is the big gamble. Do I defend? because this is going to be even worse. 5 plus 5 is 10. And this is, by the way, the weakest invasion. Some of, see, this one, you roll dice. It adds to that number. I'm going to take my chance. I want to get some resources. So let's see it. And sure enough, I got lucky. Very lucky. And I think the resources I'm going to grab again will be that one. All right, each player decides. I can explore, I can gain two cards and a supply, or I can spend a citizen to gain three of those. Oh. I'll spend the citizen to gain three. I definitely don't need the extra cards right now. The supply would have helped me though. But we're way down here. We're at the year event. I can't do anything. 
All right, and then we're going to do the Warfront. Raiders. This goes up one more. Place this card in build Q4. When in the territory, I'm going to suffer this. And what this is saying is I can attack the card. You know, do a campaign. Attack the card, and if I get a four or better, I discard this card. Otherwise, they're going to get two more bumps. That's brutal. Okay, well, that's that. And now we're going to end harvest. I gain a gold for this. And then one, two, and one. <clears throat> this is why I don't like the standard game. The idea of ending on year nine, um, your engine is just getting going. Uh, if you go to year 12, it gets so much better. Like, things are just starting to... Look at all these cards that are just starting to matriculate. And um, the game's near over. So we just ended year 5. Now we move to year 6. I'm going to grab three cards. Alright, so this is an interesting one. The cavalry are really good. But I want to stay focused. If this does go up, I need two technologies and two bricks. If I want to level that up again, this would be one of the bricks. I got two of the fields, so I'm going to do one. Which one don't I want? I don't want this one. I'm going to get... So this is the four fields I've been looking for. And then this, once again, goes to the hinterlands. And now I gotta decide to throw one of these away. I'm actually gonna throw this one away. Because I only have room for three. The pikeman, if I'm gonna build one, it's gonna be the pikeman. And this one I'm keeping for the town. <coughs> Although, cavalry's nice. I just, you, you, like I said, you have to decide. Am I an attacker? I don't really have a lot of soldiers to go out and attack things. Although this thing, maybe I should be building my soldiers. Now remember, um, everything advances. So a lot of stuff is finishing right now. I get this guy back. <coughs> I get this, which is my barracks. And see, I have two army, one, two, and the barracks. So that was perfect timing. So now this advanced up, and now I have three natural defense because I got some walls built. So even if I don't spend a defender up here, I'm always getting three defense from that. I get one of my bricks, and I get two of my fields. And as we noted, <coughs> in order to get this objective, this is the round I have to finish. So um, I need to spend one of these to do a rush order. So this is one. And then I get to pick one other one to rush. And I'm going to pick this one for two. So now I got three of the fields. And I'm going to just keep going. I'm gonna just going to spend one more and rush this one. So now I got four. And I get to rush one of these other ones. Uh, the manor, unfortunately, I never found the sec. Oh, no, I'm going to rush the manor. And you're going to see why. So there we go. So now I'm going to hand these two in. Now we're starting to cook with Pam here. So we hand those two in, and now we got this is up to level two. We're going to gain two bricks. We're going to hand all four of these in, which these are always so tough to do. Uh, we're going to hand those in. And we finally got our agriculture to level one, and now we're going to start getting some supplies. That's going to help with our caravans. And then I'm going to take this one plus this one, and now I have two. And I either need to have a gem or three fortifications. I have one fortification. I'm going to spend all three of these to get this up to four. Now this is a max three plus two is five. So I can go up to five, but I'm up to four. And so I have three fortifications. And remember, I don't have to spend these because it's left of the lock. But I am going to spend my wild on another manor. And we're going to hand that in. And we're going to get this bad boy up to level 2. So some victory points is rolling in. But even more important now 
is I'm up to marquee level two. Where's my marquee? Oh, he's way up here. So now I have my level two guy. And I've already forgot, we're on year six. There's only five of these. I forgot to draw my card. So I do not have the level three guy yet. I just did all this stuff that gives me this guy. I don't think it's immediate. Um, because, see, he shows up on the hand. The hand occurs at the end of the harvest. So even though I did all that, I'm still only at level two. But I'll take it, because I'm going to spend... I could spend two material to get two gold and two, uh, two supply. Well, that... So I'm going to do some weird shenanigans here. I'm going to spend four gold to get two material. Then I'm going to spend that two material to get two of the gold back and two supply. Did that work out for me? This would have cost me four gold to get, and I only spent two gold to get it. So I say, yeah, that was a good exchange. It would have been even better if I was level three. Remember, this deck is unique to this faction. No other faction has this deck. Which is part of the reason why I keep forgetting to draw the cards. <laughs> okay, um, I am very happy with all that and all my actions. So now we got to choose our stance. We know it's going to be a, a friendly one, so I'm going to choose, you know, this. And this is where it gets interesting. I now have income in all these places. So I'm going to choose to go here. Because I'm now getting my two bricks on my own. And that's part of the reason why I didn't want that research. Because as much as you saw me going after the bricks, getting two supplies is even better than getting bricks. Um, so I'm going to do that. And uh, let's see. I did this. Now we do any resolve any attacks. And now we're going to resolve the caravan. So caravan comes back like it always does. I have three of these which is going to be green dice and one of these which is going to be a blue die I should have them one two three and one and let's roll some pips here uh... two I got four this is not a good roll but let's try this one again Three, four, five, six, seven. So two, four, six, seven. All right, that was at least a little redeeming. And then I get to gain a trade. Now, one thing you may notice is look at these red numbers. Those red numbers are threat. So when this guy attacked at four, that became nine, and then this became 10, 11, 12. If I would have had this one here, that would have added two more threats, so that would have become 14. Okay? So these are juicy to take these ones. You know, getting a gem every time you complete a trade route sounds awesome, but you're gaining four threat when you do that. This is gaining a pez, you know, one of your workers back, right? Or your people. That's three. This one gives you a fortification and one of those red attack thing. Not this is prosperity. But I would actually get one of these for real, which lets me add plus one to my army attack value. This one's not bad. It really isn't. Um, <clears throat> I think for where we're getting at at this stage of the game, I don't know if I want to be adding threat. I know this is going to be bad. That's going to be eight. Plus five is 13, and then I'm rolling three green dice on top of it. I can mitigate eight, and I can make this five times two is 10. I can mitigate 18. I might not actually be in that bad of a shape. I, what I'm debating is, do I want to add four more threat to my kingdom to get a gem? I would love to show you how to resolve one of these. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to. Wow. 
Well, I think I'm going to do the two gold. And my logic is I need a lot of gold to push these guys back. So let's do let's start thinking about the solo game here. So and then I have two of these now, which during the action phase I could have spent them to get one of these back. I chose not to yet, but I'm still chewing on it because um that is a good idea. You want these these are by the way negative victory points at the end of the game if you don't have these refilled. This is not negative victory points, just these ones. Um and then this lets me peek. So I get to see this last card. And that is not the last card. That one is. Now this is a threat, but a threat at the last part doesn't hurt us at all. So that's a nothing burger. We're just waving at them as they go by. And then this, of course, is just what happens at the end of the game. So we got all the future in front of us. And um, uh, what did I do? I totally forgot to do that. Let's see. We, Oh, I resolved the caravan. That's right. So now we res reveal the year event, which is this. And so we're doing a worker. So we gain two gold and a gem just for being a worker. See, having that knowledge of what's coming next is really powerful. So we, we get up to nine gold, we have a gem, and now we get to resolve the war front. So let's do that. And it's, sure enough, it's going up two more. If this triggers last stand, gain plus two defense roll. So, so why does it keep mentioning last stand? Last stand is they're gonna roll two red dice and we have to defend against it with only our soldiers. If we don't, um, we lose the game. The whole saga is over. The three games, everything's over. So what this is just saying is I get plus two to my defense roll. Now there's things over here, like I can add to my defense roll with this, you know, there's stuff I can do. Um, but I, all I'm trying to say is that, uh, you know, you don't want to get to the last stand, but there's some nice, These are. it's nice that they have some, hey, if this triggers last stand, you at least get a bonus. All right, so we did that, we did that, and now we're gonna do our end harvest. So I chose to go here this time, so it's gonna give me two more. And then here I get a gold. Here I get two resources, and now I start getting a silver. And in case you noticed, if you do an attack stance, you actually gain a gold. And then this means you're doing a campaign, and a campaign consists of two soldiers, only two. You can never do more than two per campaign. You can send multiple campaigns out, as many as you want, but they're in groups of two. And some of these invasions, or some of these looming threats like this one, this is saying you can send two campaigns against it at the same time. So basically you could send four troops against this guy. This one here, I can only send two. Okay, <clears throat> now remember, I can't attack this one yet because that's not revealed. I know it because I peeked and I'm keeping them revealed so I don't forget. This I can attack, however I don't have the technology siege weapons. To get siege weapons I needed this to be level 1, which is, I now have level 1, and if I'm willing to spend 2 gold I can get the siege weapons and it does give me 2 of those tokens to help me. And you know what, we may want to go off and attack them, just because, uh, now this guy, see, if he selected to defend he rolls red. And it's not just for caravans, even though he's called a trade guard. He's a really good defender. So you want him for whenever they're doing those attacks against us. I I want to show you how to do an attack, and then as the moment I do, um, you know, then we're going to get attacked and I'm going to have no defenders again. <laughs> but I may, you know, we may want to do it just to get rid of this card. This card, uh, it sort of stinks because the only thing you get for defeating it is you get rid of the card. At least, uh, let's see, if we do this one, we get to take one of these cards as loot, um, and we get to push them to the left, just one. It's not super great, but this one here, if I get a five or a more, I not only destroy this, so it's no longer adding five to this anymore, but I gain a gem, two gold, and you get all of these resources. Now, if you draw with them, 
you take these two resources and then it never replenishes now if you defeat him you only get the gem but if you defeat him from the first go without anybody doing the draw you get this plus that you get all three of these so it's a it's a nice bit of loot and then uh, there's a guy over here with this faction he gives you a minus one to your dice rolls he rolls a red which is the best in the game however when you attack the Sarakar, which is what these people are, you gain double the rewards. Just not double the gems, but you get double of everything else. That's fantastic. So you use him to defeat this thing, I'm getting four gold and two supplies. I just don't get double the gems. It, it's it's good. That's what that faction's for. You, you choose that faction and you're going to be more, you know, fight, fight, fight. Okay. <sighs> we... are done with the round I believe we collected the uh, income and now we go up here and we do end of age so first thing that happens all players discard their quest and gain it if it was completed so our quest says we needed two trade tokens we have one two we got it we needed resources to be level two we need township to be level one I would call that a completed quest, folks. And so, in reward for that, we could take two citizens for free, two and two, or five gold. This stands for five gold. Uh, this is a tough one, because two citizens would be nice, but I'm taking the five gold. I've never taken five gold in any of my multiplayer games, but in the solo game, I'm doing this, and... Uh, it's all because of this mechanic here. The two peasants is so valuable. <laughs> you know, having to come up with two of these to just replace one peasant is so painful. Um, so usually getting the two peasants is pretty helpful. Uh, and it still theoretically is. So I just, um, this time around, I think the gold's gonna be more handy. All right, so I completed the quest. I got that out of the way, but we're not done. We gain another advisor or commander. It's just, you know, synonymous for advisor. Epic game only, we would add those cards. We're not playing the epic. And we're also not doing epic solo mode, so that would reshuffle all the Warfront cards. So we're not doing that. Okay, so we get another advisor. We have these four to choose from. I took the general or commander last time. I don't think I need this one. The resources, just, I'm not that desperate. The extra hinterland slots I don't care about, although the extra free build is sort of nice. This one, when drawing a market card, I could draw two and pick which one I want. Um, and once per game, I can use both market cards drawn. I might go with that one. And this is just saying that when I when the caravan comes back, I get one extra pip for every gem I have. And if I get six pips, I just gain a good gem. It's nice, but you want to grab her earlier in the game. I'm going to grab this guy. Um, so he's my second advisor and now I get to draw two market cards the cards I keep forgetting to draw um, keep one and use it and then once per game I get to do both market cards I the reason why I think this is the most powerful choice for this game is because I'm up to level two so I'm gonna get the best outcome on those market cards and if I can do two market cards at once that's fantastic now I've just got the stress of figuring out when to pull the trigger on that. So, um, and then also being able to just choose which market card I want. Again, fantastic. I get the best outcome. So this guy is best for me. Otherwise, you do see me if you play with me. I take this girl a lot. Even at this stage, I would still take her because there's, you know, well, first of all, if this was the epic game, I would have another six years of caravans. But now we only have four more years left so she's not as useful okay I am ready to start the next year so uh, normally in an epic game you'd be adding all these cards in they'd be shuffled you know you would do more but we're gonna keep going one two three so this is a library uh, when it finishes I gain any level one or two knowledge we got troops and we got another manor. This is getting interesting. 
Now, what I want to consider doing, level three is the highest I can go in this base game. So, um, but level three is six victory points. See, that's nine victory points. That's nine victory points. And that's six. So I want to maybe get the three towns going, the four of these, or even two and two. Uh, as you can see, I got nothing going. So, um, the quarry is nice. I already got one of the two books I need. This means I need to have two gray technologies. I already got one of them. So I'm well on my way. The barracks I can get. I need four soldiers. So I'm never going to do the barracks. I'm going to do the quarry and the quarry. There you go. So I got this thing going to level three. I also want to get this going. The library that gives me the technology that I need to finish the books. So to do that, I have to expend another citizen and two resources, which I'm not sure I, I want to do um, for multiplayer game purposes. People can steal these cards from you. You're never allowed to discard voluntarily unless you're over the hand limit here. So if you only have three cards left, you have to put all three in your hinterlands. You're not allowed to voluntarily discard them so nobody attacks you. Uh, you can't say, oh, hey, I don't want these cards, so I'm going to discard them. It doesn't work that way. If I have a fourth card and I'm only allowed to store three, then I can pick any of them and discard them. So just something to keep in mind. Also, before I finalize my choices here, I get to draw two of these. This one is for C year events. See, that's garbage. I don't want that one. And then this one, I get to gain a citizen. Well, that's fantastic. I will take that one. Perfect. All right, so that's done. See this here? I'm going to spend the gem. Gems are victory points, by the way. Two gems is one victory point. I'm spending it to get another wild. And I'm going to put the wild in the queue. One thing I never explained to you is at the final year, after the end harvest, you do these extra steps. You resolve any caravans, and all cards get progressed into your territory. So even if you put a card way up here, they all get built down here. And you get to, res you get to move them all into your territory and then resolve your upgrades. So um, you get to do final builds. So it's a big mad rush uh, on your final turn to just fill this queue up with as much stuff as you can. And that's the way I understand it. I don't think um, I've been playing it wrong. Um, the the part that's ambiguous is it says all cards go into your territory. It doesn't say you get to then spend them to upgrade these. But this has always been like a free action because it's not anything in here. See, when you progress, the building of these things is part of the progress. Um... I could spend resources to rush some of these. I think right now there's no need to. I am going to spend six gold to move this one, two, three pips to the left. I know I can do it again because it says infant, but I want to make sure, is there any technology that I'm really just chomping at the bit for? I can now build level two stuff. This is a really nice one if you have a lot of cavalry. This is a great one for defending. Your pikemen defend at a four instead of a two. This one's nice. Um, all my bricks now absorb three hits instead of two. This one lets me gain another advisor so I can have the guy I chose and the girl that helps my caravans. That's also pretty cool. 
All right, I think I'm good. So I'm going to go ahead and progress bees. I got another wild. Him by itself doesn't really do me anything. I'm going to... Um, I keep going to the right. I apologize. That costs four gold. I'm just going to wait on that one. I was going to get a technology. I'm just going to use the library to get a technology. And then I should be good. Um, if there's anything to rush, I would like to get this town out and maybe now buy his town. Look at that. There's Actually, I could get all three of these towns out. Oh, I need to think about that. For the extra build, give me a second. I might still do something here. Yeah, I'm going to spend two gold and another peasant. The two gold puts me into two, so the peasant plus two. I'm going to put this one out at three. And then I'm going to spend two gold to take this town. And I'm going to discard this one to take this town. Now, what the rules say is that he automatically f refills. So there you go. So that's a nice one where you get four gold and a gem. That might be good for end game. So now I got two more towns I can build next turn. I definitely don't want to rush that. I don't have any resources. I don't want to spend all my peasants. Okay, now I, like I said, I progressed down. So the town actually would be here now. Uh, expedite. So I don't have anything to expedite. Um, I actually could send out a caravan, but instead I'm going to just spend the four to get two citizens back. I'm feeding the population. I can fortify, or no, I can't. I can spend gold, but I don't want to. And I'm just going to do this. And I'm going to keep doing this because I want to get more citizens back. Okay, yeah. So we're going to do that stance. This skips, this skips. We reveal the year event. I am here, so I gain two gold and a gem. Fantastic. Two gold and a gem. I feel like we did that one already. Yeah, it was up here. Oh, it happened three times. Wow. That is fantastic. Yeah. That usually doesn't happen. We're going to get invaded next round, so no more fun next time. So we resolved the year-end event. Now we're going to do the war front. So they're going to progress one. And now he's going to roll two red dice against me. But this time, instead of gray, I'm going to get to roll blue and green. But he's defending, so it's blue and red. So he's got two red to my blue and red. I'm going to have to roll separately. So let's just at least get this one rolled. So he rolled a four, and that was a crappy, crappy one. And another one, so I still lost. <laughs> oh, you jerk. And he moves two more to the right. So he's up to nine. <clears throat> okay. Not good. Now I do end harvest. I gain a silver. Uh, if you ever remember the song Give Me Silver, Blue, and Gold the color of the I think rain I'm told or something like my rainbow um, so silver, there's the gold I don't know where the blue is um, two of those I have gold and then I'm going to take two of these which will give me another citizen All right, so the one thing is when these guys do the direct assault, the rules specifically say I don't have to expend these into the defend. That's not what happens. But whenever I use them to defend against uh, this one, I will have to expend them. That's the reason why it's called direct assault versus an invasion. Okay, um, next round. 
going to get all this done in one video. We're an hour and a half. So we're going to draw three cards. One, two, three. This is going to get to level three. I do not need any more quarry. Uh, the other stuff I do need. I did grab a town, so I maybe didn't need to buy all those towns. So we're going to go ahead and put that town in for one. And this town in for two. I don't think I'm going to get enough grain out there. Because I'd have to kill a lot of peasants, kill a lot of resources. I need four. I might be able to get two manors going. Here's one of them. Um... So I'm going to go ahead and keep that card. Uh, but this one I'm going to discard. Yeah, I'm not going to ever get four soldiers either with the way I'm playing. So, yep, I'm going to do that. If I can get one more manor, I'll build this one plus the one other one. And um, we are going to get this one to level up. Okay, so now this... That's right. We got we have one more turn after the invasion. I keep thinking the invasion's the last thing. So everything's going to progress down. And then we draw two of these cards. This one, we're going to gain four brick for this money. Or I can spend three supply to get two gold, three brick, and a gem. That's a lot of bricks. If I don't do it now, I'm taking all my gamble that I'm going to do these two cards. Remember, there was one card that was worthless, and I don't know what's left. I don't think I'm allowed to peek. Well, I'll go ahead and... See, now the other thing is, is like this is how I'm going to get one of my guys back, and then one more round later, I'm going to have two again, and I get my last guy back, and that's how I'm going to you know, not lose any points at the end of the game. This sort of throws a monkey wrench. No, it doesn't. I'm actually going to spend... Yeah, it throws a little bit of a monkey wrench. Yes, it does. So I have to spend two gold to be able to do this one. I could always do the one above. Um, but this one gets me a gem. I get three of these. Speaking of which... I'm going to keep this gem. I'm not going to get more wild cards. And I just realized I have two wild cards. There's my two manners right there. I might be fine. I probably should have started focusing on soldiers. I'm going to discard this one and just do this one. So for one silver and two gold, I'm going to get four brick. I'm going to spend one of those bricks to get this up to five. Three plus two. Or three plus two. And then that's resolved. And then, uh, yeah, for the actions, I'm going to spend four bricks. Send out the caravan. And I'm also going to spend six more gold to move one, two, three to the left. I'm going to spend two of these to get my citizen back. Yeah, I'm sort of scraping the barrel. Uh, this this mechanic, of course, when you're playing multiplayer, you don't have this. So all this gold, I'd be more focusing on, you know, what technology do I want to buy, you know, or whatever. These technologies at the top count as gems for purposes of scoring. It takes two gems, though, to score one victory point. I mean, it's not that fabulous of an exchange rate. And then, of course, I'm sending out my defender here now that my turn's over so the defender of course is going to give me five plus three so i'm going to get eight points without the defender i still get the three but um 
I'm going to get eight points. What he gives me is those extra five points right there. You could, of course, choose not to defend if you're that confident in the rest of your abilities. But I'm going to go ahead and do that and get eight. All right, so the invasion is three green dice. Let's roll. Autobots. Oh my gosh, did I roll horrible. Three, six, seven. Seven plus eight is 15. Plus five is 20. He's attacking me with a strength of 20. So, here's eight. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, that's right. I got 10 defense out of that. So that's 18 out of the 20. So my victory parade's not going to trigger. I still have to absorb two more damage. And if you go over here to see what absorbs damage, silver doesn't cut it, but gold does and bricks. So I got to absorb two hits. So this is one gold and one brick. So there's my two hits. So that gives me to 19. That gives me to 20. Oh, hold on. I got two plus one. I got three more I got to do. And one of these mitigates it, unfortunately. Nope, 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 nope. I am not done yet. This counts as one defense. And this counts as two. There's three right there. Two plus one, three. I can put my army to it so I don't have to kill him. The citizens are worth three. But I found another way to do three. Okay, see, this extra two almost killed me. <laughs> All right, um, your event's done. Let's do the war front and watch this be one of those direct assaults. And there it is. Moves over one. I don't have my guys to roll dice anymore. So now I am cannon fodder here. Psh, eight to two. Not a chance. Moves two more. So I think you can see in a solo game, having military is a little more powerful uh, than having an economic. I mean, the economics has to be powerful enough to keep just pushing back. That's the thing. And I, I feel like I am. And this is not a losing game. It just means I'm not going to score victory points at the end. But they are going to push two more. It's going to get to 11. And then we got one more card to draw that could push it to 13. I am in a little bit of precarious water here. Okay, so we did all that. Um, Defender really didn't... Uh, oh, it does give me a plus one. See that plus one? So I got a three against their eight. <laughs> um, didn't quite uh, do what I planned. So here's a silver, two brick, one gold, and only one of those. Now I do get to collect income at the end of this round. So I will be able to figure out how to spend gold to turn it into this and then feed well I don't get to gain a citizen though you don't get to do actions <laughs> at the end of the round but I will get um yeah it doesn't quite work I guess I can convert though into silver these resources so that just helps me to get victory points Okay, um, draw three cards. And I'm drawing all the towns that I was asking for. So I got my three towns here. I have my two quarries there. This plus this can count as my two manors. So I guess I am just gonna pile on some some green and look I got a whole bunch of stuff in my queue here 
Uh, yeah, I'm going to build two. I'm not going to brush order anything. But I do get to see these last two cards first. Oh my gosh, there's my lifesaver right there. This one, I'm going to do both, right? My once per game. This one, I just straight up gain a gold and a gem. And then this one, for two gold and a silver, which is exactly what I have, I gain four supplies. One, two, three, four. How fantastic was that? And then I progress everything. And these as well. So this one causes this to take two more blips over. This is where my concern is. Uh, this one says I get to gain a technology. And I'm going to gain... I keep going to the right. I'm going to gain university. So what this is, is I now have two purples for satisfying this. And university, all knowledge requirements for provinces are reduced by one. So I only need one book to advance this one. And yeah, I got a whole bunch of stuff that's going to finish here. So um, this one is what you call a prosper tile. So it's going to count as a gem at the end of the game. And then of course I have my first town and then this. And um, the question is, uh, I always played it that, you know, when these came down at the end of the game, you still get to upgrade all this stuff. I I, I don't know why it's, but now I'm suddenly explaining it to you and I'm second guessing it. Um, so when you do uh, end of game, so all players proceed together. We progress all cards into their territory, resolve buy goods, feed population, and buy knowledge. So you actually do get to feed population and buy knowledge and buy goods. You get to do all those actions. We get to upgrade provinces and convert all remaining yeah so you actually do it's written in the rules I feel better I, I don't know why I was getting so much anxiety over it you get to do all those things and in fact here it says all those things so I don't know if the rule book is changing or maybe the the version of the card that's in this uh, game see like this is not saying the same thing but the rule book is the king, not the card, at least from my book. And so, yeah, I am going to get to do all my upgrades once all this stuff comes down. So, um, what does that mean? Well, uh, I'm going to spend two to get the last citizen. And you can see I have three more. And it's going to cost me two to move this thing one to the left because I'm really worried about getting to the last stand. I don't have any defending army to uh, push it. I have no gold, no nothing at this point. This card was resolved. And... So this pushdown happens after end harvest. So one of the things I want to consider is if I spend resources to rush these, then when I do my end harvest, I'm going to get, you know, one extra silver or one extra brick. That one gives me one extra gold. It's not that fantastic, to be honest. I don't think it's worth it. Uh, my concern is just I thought for sure I was doing so fantastic in the gold. But let's uh, remember, this is only during the action phase. So as soon as I progress to choosing my stance, I'm no longer in the action phase. So I'm going to get a bunch of gold from my caravan. I just can't, you know, do that here. Hmm. Well... Maybe I shouldn't have sent that caravan when I did, but uh, I think I'm going to get some nice money from that. Yeah, I think I have to just choose my stance, and of course I'm going to choose 
a worker one. Which one do I want the extra bonuses? Well, I'm going to take the extra extra gold because I need gold to push this thing left. Um, per the rule book, you get to do actions here. Um, you know, the final phase, and this is part of those actions in the solo game. So the question becomes, when I reveal this card, am I going to bump three spaces? I can absorb two, but not three. This is the... Uh, oh my gosh! <laughs> I get to move one to the left, and I gain a prosperity. Wow! Did that come at a fortuitous time? Now, I'm just curious. There's three more of these left. Let's just see what they are. It could have been that one. Oh, that's actually a nice one. Removing a looming threat. I mean, yeah, you, you move one to the right, but this is a victory. It means I get to remove like that. Hmm. Uh, this one would have just been one bump. We would have been fine. But yeah, we would have at least gotten a plus two. And that would have been right there. That would have killed us. Two would have gotten us right to the precipit, you know, right to the edge. And then I would have lost this battle here. And then that would have given me the one more bump. And then what that would have done is triggered Last Stand, which means we would have done yet another battle. And if I would have lost that one, then I'm done. So, anyways, I, I this this deck was fun. I like this. This was, it's a simple solo game. It didn't add a lot of complexity, but it was good. It gives me something to interact with, and this um it is like a beat a score that the game sets. And actually, I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to beat it, but we'll well, let's see how we do. All right, so we did that. Um, we got to resolve the caravan. It's four green dice. Here we go. Shake, shake, shake. Uh, this is a reroll. Three, four, five, six, which is one, two, three gold. All right, that's at least something. But here's the thing, the caravan comes back, I can choose to take another trade route, and of course I'm going to take the gem, because I don't have any more combats coming up. So I get to foresee something, there's nothing to foresee, but I get two more gold, and I get a gem. So that's not bad. Alright, so that's done, the year event's done, the war front, oh what did I do, I jumped ahead and did the war front, but that's okay. Uh, that's done. The event was simple. It's just um, the looming threat, which doesn't do anything. So we're at the end harvest. So here I'm going to take two gold, and I get to draw a card, but the card doesn't really do anything for me at this point. Um, now, it would in the epic game, because these capstone cards are worth victory points. So drawing a card is important in that game, but not this one. So we get two of these. No, I'm sorry, just one of those. And then we get two brick and a silver. All right, so we got ourselves seven gold. Uh, yeah, we're going to be pushing it here, but let's... So now we're at, quote, the end of the game. So we trigger this thing. After end harvest, follow the remaining steps. So um, now this caravan thing is if I would have sent a caravan out, then I would have been able to resolve the caravan. That's what this is saying. And um, like I said, this is not letting you the action phase it's just saying that during the action phase you get to do this plus those. Oh, I see what it's saying. During the action phase you don't get to do the caravan, but you get to do everything else. I think that's what that's saying. Well, this is not during... Hold on. Yeah, there's no caravan in here, I guess. That's interesting. They definitely contradict each other. But I think what that's just saying is that the the rule book says you get to do the stuff in the action phase, and this is saying that the in the action phase you do this conversion, but I don't know what the X is over the caravan. 
let's see if they use that symbology whenever we cash in the caravan caravans so they don't show an X they don't show anything it's just you know you get the caravan interesting I don't know if the designers are watching I would love to hear your thoughts so everything comes back now you might be thinking well what good are the troops um, every two troops is our victory point so that's going to be a victory point and um, we're going to bring back all this stuff we've got another wild and then two of these alright so first off uh, we know we got the three towns so I'm going to grab all three of those discard them and this goes up to level two so that just gave me three victory points because this is really going to be my primary source of victory points and just to play at home here I need 26 and I'm looking at right now I'm at 10 13 17 19 <laughs> but I'm not done so this is four is going to turn into six because of this so that would be 21 and then we have these two are gonna convert this one to six so that would be 23 oh my gosh I'm really pushing it I'm gonna be close so I got that up and then these two don't do anything for me oh wow so really now I need my victory points to come from up here and I am going to be able to spend six gold to move this one two three it gets me to one victory point and I'm gonna be able to spend two of these to move it one more which puts me to two victory points this might be what gets me through the game right or that final push because the rest of this is not looking good um, and then it's just saying that I get to convert these to silver so this would be equal to two gold which is something and I need to have five gold to get a victory point though and um, what's interesting is do I get to do this conversion to then spend three of these to move this again I don't think I can because I think that this is supposed to be the final thing you do is you convert and then you um, you start to score points okay so let's do the score points phase which is here and there's a score sheet that they put on the board here so you can put your name and all that stuff and let's go to the pen so for the provinces I think we calculated I have 18 20 23 points so 23 points for the provinces then one victory point for every two army and I have exactly two so that's a big old one gems one victory point for every two every five gold prosper cards and knowledge okay so knowledge counts as a gem if it's level three prosper cards count as a gem and then every five gold gets converted into a gem and so you only get one victory point for every ten gold so I have three gems and a prosper card which is four so that's two victory points I don't have any level three knowledge that's these guys up here so you got the little gems on them hinterland that's only for epic and then hardship minus one for each citizen that's not on the board I don't have any so 23 24 25 26 is my score and I needed to get 26 so I just barely made it by the skin of my teeth now um, the prosperity you get is 2 plus every victory point over the goal so what I wanted to do was go past 26 to get more prosperity points but we did get 2 so um, so technically we did get um, right here um, so we have uh, 
difficulty. The VP target was 26, and uh, currently we're at uh, two prosperity points. And the final warfront position. Oh my gosh, I forgot. We get two victory points from that. The current serpent reward. Um, I don't know what unused prosperity points means. Do I actually score points for that? It doesn't say that anywhere. Let's see here. At the end of the first and second game, if you have satisfied all winning conditions, you gain prosperity points. Before choosing which faction you can discard, you currently own can be discarded and refunded at half cost. Not spent may be saved for subsequent game. This may be recorded. Or alternatively, you may discard prosperity points to gain one gold for use in that game only. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. So I don't know why this is written here, but this is not a score thing. So we're going to get rid of that. That's how much I needed. The final war position gave me two more. It, this should be up here in the score sheet. So technically I have 28 points. I did do well because of this right there. Two victory points. So I'm at 28. So that means I had two. Um, and then I get two plus the two that I went over. So that's four more. So I'm currently sitting with six reward points. And there you have it. So now what I get to do is I start game number two. And I have six of these reward points that I can spend to buy one of these cards. And let's just look at a few of them. Like this one, at the start of the game, I get to see the sixth event and the last year's event. So I get to foresee two events if I spend two of them. That'd be one of my three slots. And remember, it says that I can always sell these to get half value back. There's some five-pointers here, like this one. Ignore all threat from your caravan trade routes. So that means I can take the gold, the gem, and, you know, those little threat markers on them. I get to ignore those whenever I'm attacked. That's actually very good. I can understand why that costs five. This one costs all six. The first three tiers of the agriculture province only takes three grain instead of four. Oh, that could be fantastic. You start the game with two extra gold. It's just one prosperity point. So there's some really nice ones here. I don't even know which one I would want. Um, I think the sixth one actually looks really good, to be honest. Start the game with an additional cavalry and build time three. This one might actually be the winner. And and the only reason I say that is because you're getting free troops automatically in the build queue at the start of the turn. And what did we do this entire game? We struggled with, you know, you only get to build two things. And so you're either going for your economy or you're going for your troops. You can't do both. So this gives you a free troop and it's a cavalry troop, which is really good for attacking. That's a fine one. I, I mean, obviously this one getting needing one less card to advance your agriculture that gives you your supplies which are very you saw how about powerful those supplies were this one if there's a productive year you gain both the bonuses um, so you could do this one for four and then another one for two and now you got two bonuses rolling your way instead of just getting the one bonus eh, it's there's some some good options now with Tabletop Simulator, the whole board is messy. I would have to exit and start a new game. So the only thing that carries over that I need to personally remember is I can't play this particular faction ever again in the saga. Remember, I gotta play three games. This faction's out. And I got six points that carries with me to the next one. So I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here and I'll see you in game two. Thanks for watching. As always, stay awesome.